Welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. And welcome to episode 111 of the English with Kirsty podcast. And today we're talking about how not to pitch ideas. So I'm not talking about people who want to learn English, um, but I run a business and I get emails from time to time um, from people who either want to sell me something or who want to write for my blog or be on the podcast or do all kinds of things. But they're pitching ideas to me or they want to sell me something. And maybe this is something that you do in your company where you have to contact people you don't know and they don't know you. So there's no relationship there. Um, And these are some of the mistakes that I see other people making. And they're not necessarily language mistakes. Some of them may be. Um, Some of them are just people doing things that are a really bad idea. But some of it, I think, can be language or things that you think are okay or maybe happen. Um, But they don't come across well to to other people, maybe in other parts of the world. Um, Some of these are definitely things that happen in um, the people that did them were based in places where it's also not okay to do them. But, you know, I want to be um, I want to be open to the fact that people do business in different ways and communicate in different ways. But at the same time, um, there are things that that aren't appropriate. So if you're going to do business with people in different parts of the world you part of that is finding out what's appropriate there and what people like and you know, even to what days are working days because I had someone quite annoyed with me that I didn't get back to them straight away on a Sunday because for them a Sunday is a normal working day well for me it isn't and I don't answer emails at the weekend and that's because <laughs> Sunday is my day off as is Saturday and you know it's just good if you are working with people in other places just to, to find out what's normal for them and then there'll be less misunderstandings. So I've got 11 things that people have done they're all real examples I'm not going to use names or anything but they're all things that people have done and I would advise you not to do them partly because well all because they're kind of annoying and some of its language some of it's just the way people express themselves and some of it's just 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 don't do it (laughs) okay so we've got 11 things number one is but it's free like there's so much now um you know content marketing is a big thing i have the podcast it's not there's no charge for the podcast I provide free content online because I want people to get to know me and and find out what I offer and if they like it then they might want to consider buying from me if they don't that's fine as well Um, but you know content marketing is a thing and it it wasn't such a big thing in the past it is now and people do provide um, materials and PDFs and video courses all kinds of things for free Um, And the same goes for testing software. You know, you may have a trial period or you can use it so many days and then you have to buy the full version. The problem is when people are trying to sell these things and they contact you and you don't want the thing and, and they say, oh, but it's free. Why do you not want this? It's free. But, you know, it's free. It's not enough to make somebody want something they don't need or have no use for. Um, so if somebody's trying to offer me some software to manage staff and I don't have any staff, then I don't care that it's free. I don't need the software. So I, I think some people get really offended when you don't want their free stuff, but it's only a good deal if you need or want that thing in the first place. And I think sometimes people forget that. So the fact that something's free doesn't make it desirable if the thing isn't useful to the person that you're offering it to. I think a lot of these things just come down to doing a bit of research because like with some of the things that people contact me about, if they had looked at my website, they would know that I'm probably not going to buy the thing and they could spend more time on people who might buy the thing than contacting loads and loads of people in the hope that someone will buy the thing. So number two, and I know that in some cultures, it's not appropriate to start talking business before you've developed a relationship with someone but it's also like for me it's not appropriate to ask for a meeting with me and I don't know why 
I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want the meeting about. You just want a meeting. Actually, that's that's not okay. So if if you want to talk to me about the services that I'm offering, that's fine. If you think we could perhaps work together and you want to discuss an idea, let me know what that briefly what that is. That's fine because then I can make an informed decision about if I want to have that meeting. But if you just contact me and I have no idea where you, who you are and you say, hey, I, um, I need to talk to you about something. Let's have a meeting. Well, that's that's not cool because I don't. I can only decide if I have time for that meeting if I know a bit more information. So don't do that to people. Number three, um, and I think this is possibly a language issue um, because when you're trying to sell something, one of the the basic principles that you're taught if you do any kind of marketing course is that you fix a problem. So my fixing a problem is like, do you want to feel more confident when you're talking to customers and colleagues in English? Do you want to be able to write business emails without worrying about every every sentence? And often we ask these things as questions. Do you feel like this? Do you want this? Because then you're giving the person the option to say, yes, I do. That's something I really need. Or no, I don't actually. That's That's not something for me that doesn't apply to me. Um, the problem is if you approach somebody and tell them you they have a problem. I mean, nobody likes being told that they have a problem. Um, and you say something specific like, "Oh, you know, your 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 content is interesting, but you make a lot of mistakes and it's really horrible to read." But don't worry, I can fix it. I do editing for people. Or, "Oh, your website really isn't very good, but hey, I'm a web designer. It's going to be okay if you ask me to fix it." You know, people don't like being told that their website isn't very good. Maybe they think it isn't. Maybe they would like to improve it. Um, so if you say something like, would you like some some new ideas about, um, you know, making your website the best that it can be or something. But you, if you go and tell someone they've got a rubbish website and it doesn't do the job that they want it to do, then they're not necessarily going to feel happy about that and want you to fix it. So if you do anything that directly criticizes people and says hey you have a problem but it's okay because I can fix it that's not gonna make people want to employ you generally um, if, if they say they have a problem that's fine but if a complete stranger comes up to you and says oh yeah you're the I don't know the audio on your podcast is terrible I but I'm an audio engineer I can fix it for a really good deal then I don't know if if a listener came up to you and said that then you think okay maybe there's a problem but if it's somebody who's trying to sell you something then you may think that they're just trying to invent the problem so they can fix it so don't tell people that they've got a problem um, number four I think sometimes I've touched on this but people don't look at exactly what someone's site is offering um, so they may think okay all teachers need a way for students to pay them for example so yeah you must need this service that we have because it's a really good way of, of doing international money transfers and for a start why would I do that when I've got something that already works and something that my customers know and trust um, but secondly that, that might be relevant for people in countries where they don't accept things like PayPal but it's not a need that I have and like some people say okay you're a teacher so you need an online calendar I hate online calendars <laughs> and there's no way people know that you know that that's fine but I think it's we need to be careful when we, we are targeting things like maybe a better example you are a blind person so you need this software because it was designed for blind people well there's there's so many different kinds of blind people with different um, different amounts of sight, different abilities when it comes to technology. I think sometimes people have their categories way too broad and think that everybody in a certain um, set of people would want a thing. Whereas if they look to the website and what the person is actually offering, like if you go back to the idea about staff management software, nowhere on my site does it say we, I don't talk about a team. It's quite obvious if you look on my site that maybe I do have staff working for me um, but it, it very much looks like a one-person website who probably isn't gonna need a massive HR package so that just makes me think oh you haven't looked 
you've just found every teacher you can and just sent out a load of emails number five um people getting angry that they didn't get a reply to the spam that they sent well yeah people are busy and if you contact them to try and sell them something that they don't need and they contact you back then you you really shouldn't send another two or three emails to ask why they didn't contact you about the thing that they never wanted in the first place that's just not cool Number six, um, there's two types of things with, with pitching content for the website. So one of them is, I want to write an article about this thing and is a thing that possibly me and probably my readers don't want to read about, um, or, or for a podcast guest for that matter. And, you know, it's it's not relevant. And, and if you looked at the site, you'd know it wasn't relevant. Um, just because you find something really exciting and interesting it doesn't mean that everybody else will and no means no if somebody says this isn't a good fit for my blog or podcast then that's the answer you don't come back and argue why the person who's podcast it is is wrong because that isn't that isn't good and also um if you if you hire somebody if you're looking to be on podcasts and you hire somebody to contact people for you then they're representing you and if they go and contact a load of people that are completely irrelevant, then that doesn't look good for you either. I had someone asking me if somebody that she was working for could be um, a guest on the podcast. And I very rarely have guests on the podcast, but anyway. And he wasn't a good fit at all. Um, and I just thought, well, no, because you, you don't even know what my podcast's about. I think you've just contacted a load of podcasters in the hope that somebody would say yes. And then it's even more kind of patronizing when someone says oh well, he'll be such a good fit for your podcast and it's very obvious that he won't which just looks bad on you really because then it's obvious you didn't do your research the next one is very standard templates and i know somebody was actually promoting this idea on facebook that if you want to um, be featured on people's websites then send out a very horrible generic template and you can even get software to do it for you and then people will either reply or not and those that reply will be sent to a certain folder and then you can reply to them the problem I have with that is you can see it's a very horrible generic standard template and it says things like oh I learned something from every post that you write and even my favorite bloggers I wouldn't say that I mean it's great people are learning because this is an educational site but when I think about the people whose blogs I really enjoy I can't say I enjoy every single thing they do because that's not realistic if I said something like oh I really enjoyed the post you did on this subject and I learned that whatever that that means a lot more than something very general like I like everything you do and it's so educational well I, I really hope people do get value from it but um, it's it's not specific and that's the problem it's a general template that could go out to hundreds and hundreds of people and there was no thought that went into it so if you want to establish a relationship with somebody you do need to put some thought into the initial email unless it's something like oh this event is is happening in two weeks time and i think it may be interesting for your members if it's an organization or something that's fine because you're just announcing something but if you were trying to ask somebody for something or to develop a relationship then you really need to put some time and effort into personalizing that and, and making it clear why them why did you choose this website over all the other ones that you could have approached um, because that makes you look sincere and that's you're more likely to get an answer that way um, some, sometimes I get very random questions usually from schools um, so it's quite clear from my website that I work with adults online and it's oh we need somebody to teach five-year-olds in a specific country and I just think well no because <laughs> there's nothing on my website about teaching children there's not you know they may not know where I am that's fair enough but it it says quite clearly on, on most of the pages that I provide on online training so if you are going to approach different companies just spend a little bit of time looking at what the website says because then you can filter out the ones that are not going to be relevant for what you're looking for um, 
yeah, I've touched on this already, Matt. Our software meets a need you, you don't have. Um, I think sometimes people think that everybody has the same problems. And that's not true either, because people may have already created their own solutions to problems. And of course, you don't know who has the problem or not. But again, I would I would ask questions like, do you have this problem? Do you are you looking for whatever rather than you need this in your life today? Because, oh, no, <laughs> that just doesn't. I, maybe in other parts of the world, it, it's it's OK. But, you know, for, for people here in the UK, that, that is kind of a bit pushy and nobody likes pushy. You know, nobody likes um, the idea of somebody trying to sell you something that you don't want or that you can't get rid of them and they're just going to keep pushing until they get the sale. That's that's not a great way to do it. And even really, um, really well-known companies, I, I was on a discussion forum a couple of weeks ago and somebody was complaining about an email that said, um, you're not you're not using our app. Our app can do this. You, you know, you have to go and get our app. And I, I think there are better ways of writing that email. For example, like, did you know that we have an app? And if you download our app, you can do this and this and this. Um, you can get the app here instead of like, you're not, you, you know, you haven't downloaded this. Why not? You know, it, it sounds like you're a bad person because you didn't download our app. Whereas if you say, oh, did you know we had this? It's offering something that's adding value. So even, you know, a really short email like that, you can rewrite it to make it sound different. And maybe for some people it's okay to be short and to the point and you're not doing this, get it here. But for other people that, that sounds a bit rude, really. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm not using it. And that's my choice. Whereas, did you know we have this and, and it could help you is is more friendly and it's offering something which you're showing will add value. And then the final thing um, I wanted to add because it doesn't really fit in with the email idea but it's something that happened a couple of times during the last week and I just wanted to highlight it. It's about using other people's platform for your own advertising and that's not cool because the other person who's gone to the trouble of building an audience, whether it's a Facebook page or a Facebook group, and then if somebody just comes in and starts posting their advertising for the kind of service that the other person offers, that's just really bad tactics. It's it's lazy because it's people that haven't bothered to get their own audience, and it's spam because it's not invited, and it's it's disrespectful as well because, you know, that's the other person's space, they, they've built this audience. I'm not talking about things that could be useful to other people because I will pass them on if there's something interesting you think my readers might like. I'm I, I'm happy to pass that on. I pass on information from other teachers. I'm not precious about that. But if you start um, posting your A, irrelevant events or B, paid products that are very similar to my paid products in my my groups and on my Facebook page, then I will delete them um, for a start. But that's that's not a good way. You should build your own audience or, or try to collaborate with people working in the same space. But don't just try and use their advertising or their platforms to get you free advertising. That's not cool. And that's not professional either. And if, if I saw somebody doing that in, in another space, I would think, well, I would question their, their business ethics and whether I would want to work for them. So not only are you potentially irritating the person whose space it is to start with, other customers may not think well of you because um, they see the way that you conduct yourself and think, well, maybe I don't want to do business with this person. OK, so those are just a run through of 11 things that, that people do and have done and I've seen these are all real examples. I didn't need to make any of them up. Um, and this isn't so much about learning English, although some of the things are about how you phrase things. And I think that that, that may be a language issue. I think in some of these cases it wasn't, but I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, and some of these things are just things to think about, because I think sometimes people get so wrapped up in how good their product or service is and how it will help people and they genuinely want to help people, um, that they forget that not everybody sees it the same. And even if you think something's really valuable, as I said right at the beginning, if the other person doesn't need that thing, then the value decreases for them because 
well, it's it's not as useful as it would be if if you really did the research to find the people that that really want the thing. So I hope that was useful. Um, have a good week. If you think other people would enjoy the podcast, then please share it with your friends or on social media. That would be great. Have a great week and have fun learning English. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.